subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, viewers. Good evening and welcome once again to the Joy Learning Channel, the SHSR, where we learn with so much passion and so much joy. We are on once again and today we are going to be looking at overhead absorption and job costing. I am Madam Judith and I still remain your teacher for cost accounting. From our previous lesson, we look at overhead absorption rates, of which we look at the various types of overhead absorption. And today we are going to continue from there and then we continue with job other costing. Let's look at the objectives for the day. By the end of the lesson, you'll be able to state the types of overhead absorption rates of which you've already done, so it have to be easy for you to state them. Then calculate different overhead absorption rates. Calculate the cost of a unit produced using any of the overhead absorption rates. Then define job costing. You will also be able to state the purposes and characteristics of job costing and then prepare a job cost sheet. Let's get rolling. So, from our previous lesson, we looked at what overhead absorption was, and we mentioned that is the process of charging overhead costs to a cost unit. That is the period where we look at transferring the overhead cost to the customers or to a product. And we have different ways of calculating the overhead cost on a product. The first is the using the direct labor R rate. We've done this, so I'm just going to go through and then we all recall our formulas, then we can use it to solve our questions. So direct labor R rates, machine R rates, prime cost percentage rates, mat direct material percentage rates, we have direct wages percentage rates, and then production units. So these are the six ways of calculating overhead absorption rate on the product. And to do that or demonstrate that we will take an illustration and then we demonstrate how each of these six methods can be used to calculate the overhead cost on an item or a unit of a product. So let's look at the question. Illustration A. Calculate six different overhead absorption rates for cost center 560 based on the budgeted data below. Calculate six different overhead absorption rates for cost center 560 based on the budgeted data below. Labor R for the period is 280,000. Total direct wages for the period is 720,000. Total direct materials for the period is also 1,500,000. Total machine hours for the period is 570,000. Then we have the total units for the period, 107,000. Then the total overheads for the period is 2,000, 2, So this is the data we are going to base on to calculate the overhead absorption rate for a particular product. Now, we have to base on this information and calculate six different overheads. As we looked at earlier, we have six different types of calculating the overhead absorption rate for a product. So let's begin. I hope your calculators, your exercise books, and your jotters are all ready. Let's all get started. So we take the first one. A, basing on the direct labor R, direct labor R rate. Our formula is always the overheads divided by the total labor R.
So the total overhead is given us in the question is two two million five hundred and eighty thousand, and the labor hours is two hundred and eighty thousand. We have the labor hours as two hundred and eighty thousand, and the total overhead for the period is two million five hundred and eighty thousand. So we input that into our formula. Overhead is two million. Five hundred and eighty thousand divided by the labor hour of two hundred and eighty thousand. Let's calculate that two five a zero divided by two hundred and eighty thousand, and that will give us ninety two. See this. Per labor hour, always make sure you leave your answer like this. Per labor hour, for every hour worked, the person or the labor is going to receive 92 CDs. So 92 CDs per labor hour. Let's take the second method and look at how best we can calculate for the overhead absorption rate. The second method is going to be based on the machine hour. The machine hour here. And the formula is also stated as we have machine R rate which will be total overhead divided by the machine R. To make it simple for you to always remember the formula, always remember that the total overhead is always held constant as the numerator and the type of overhead you are calculating for is always serving as the denominator. So if you are dealing with machine R, don't forget that total overhead is always the numerator with the machine R being what the denominator. So from our question we know the overhead is two million five hundred and eighty thousand and then the machine hours given to us in the question is five hundred and seventy as indicated on your screens so we divide the total overheads by the five hundred and seventy hours Please punch on your calculators first. And that will give us 9.5 series. 9.55 per machine R. Per machine R. So this is how we calculate the overhead absorption rate using the machine R rate. Let's look at the third type of overhead that is basing on the prime cost percentage rate. The prime cost percentage rate as indicated on your screens. So the prime cost percentage rate C As I mentioned earlier, the total overhead is still the numerator, total overhead. And it will be divided by the prime cost. Because it's the percentage, we multiply it by 100. So we know already that our overhead is 2,580,000. And our prime cost, please take note, prime cost will never be given to you in the question when you're lucky, fine. But it is your duty to find out the prime cost in the question. We know that prime cost is the summation of all direct costs. That is your direct material, direct labor, and then direct expenses. 
most of the time you are not giving expenses under the overhead absorption. But you should know that both the material and the labor gives you the prime cost. So we go to our question and look at the direct labor and the direct material that have been given. We sum the two up to give us our prime cost. So from our question, the direct wages is 720. And then the direct material is 1,500,000. So we sum the two up. 720,000 plus 1,500,000. Then we get 2,220,000 as the prime cost. So we go back to our worksheet. 2,220,000. Multiply by 100 because it's in percentage. So let's quickly punch that 250 divided by 2,220,000 multiply by 100%. And that will give us 106.21%. Of prime cost. Of prime cost. So, this is how we calculate for the prime cost percentage rate. Because it's in percentage, don't forget to always multiply by 100. You do that for the other methods of calculating overhead absorption. When you see that the type is in percentage, always make sure you multiply it by 100. And the ones without the percentage, you leave it in cities. So the ones without the percentage is always per machine R, per labor R, or per unit produced. And the one with percentages is a percentage of the prime cost, percentage of the direct wages, and the percentage of the direct material cost. I will work the last one with you, then you try the last two in your jaw test. So let me take the direct material percentage rate. So direct material percentage rate. What will be the formula? As I indicated earlier, total overheads is always the numerator and the type of overhead you are calculating for will serve as a denominator. This will help you to always keep your formulas cool in your head. So when you know the type of overhead absorption you are calculating for, then it is easy to come out with the formula. So we have the total overheads and it will be divided by the material cost. And once it's percentage, we multiply by 100. We know our total overhead as 2,580,000. And then our material cost given in the question is 1,500,000 as indicated. So we come back to our worksheet. We have 1,500,000 thousand multiplied by 100 because it's in percentage so 2580 divided by 1.5 multiply by 100 and that will give us 172 percent of material cost Okay, so these are some of the ways of calculating for overhead absorption rates. I have used four methods. I'll leave the two for you to try it in your jaw test. Now, knowing the total overhead or cost on a unit, overhead cost on a unit, we need to apply it. That is when we are adding the overhead cost that have been incurred on the material that is being produced. So now we need to look at what the application of these overheads that have been calculated to charge the overhead cost to the units that have been produced. So let's look at the B parts of our illustration. 
A cost unit has been produced in cost center 560 and the following details are recorded. Direct materials use 300 and 3,300 cities, sorry. Direct wages is 3,500 cities. Direct labor hours is 1,100 and then machine hours is 1,700. You are required to calculate the cost of the units above using each of the absorption rates you have calculated in A above. Overhead absorption, we use what's predetermined rate, that is, we predetermine the rates for the overheads. Now, the actual cost or actual hours have been incurred, and we need to charge the amount to the products. So, if you have produced a unit, we know the direct material cost incurred on it, we know the labor to give us the prime cost, but we don't know the overhead that have been incurred on the cost. So after calculating for the rate, we have to apply the rate on the actual unit or actual hours that was incurred in producing the unit to the market. So the direct materials uses 3,300. So we are going back to our question and based on the overhead absorption we calculated earlier on, we have to apply the cost on the unit produced. We have done this before during um, Form 1 element of course, We look at how best we can prepare a cost statement for a product. And we said a total cost of a product is a summation of the prime cost and then the overheads, giving us the total cost. So we know the prime cost as in the material and then the labor that was incurred on the product. We have now calculated for the rates for the overheads. Now we need to apply the overheads on the units of the product that have been produced. So let's continue with our calculation. We are looking at the B part of our question where we need to apply the overheads we have calculated for on the product. So the B part. So the B part is asking us to calculate for the cost of the unit as indicated on your screen using each of the absorption rates you have calculated in A above. So we now know the rate. Let's do the application. So basing on machine hours, using machine hours. So we have material cost, material use is 3,300, 3, sorry, you can see that on your screen, 3,300 CDs. That's the actual materials used in production. What you saw in the A part of the question was assumed. The budgeted ones now we are looking at the actual materials that were used in production and the direct materials is what 3300 the direct wages indicated is 3500 so we indicate that on our worksheet we have direct wages i'll be using d to represent direct so direct wages that is 3000 500 and I mentioned earlier that prime cost is a summation of all direct costs That is your direct materials direct wages and direct expenses here. We don't have any direct expenses So we add the two to give us our prime cost and that will give us 6,800 So this is our prime cost Our prime cost we know the prime cost, but to get the total cost of a product is the summation of your prime cost and your overheads. So using our machine hours, we have calculated a rate for the overhead and the machine hours give us a rate of 9 CD per machine hour as indicated here. So we are going to base our 
cost that we are calculating on the machine hour of nine per machine hour are used the rate is going to be the 9.55 that we calculated for as indicated on your screen you can see 9.55 per machine hour so now that we know the total machine hour that was used which is 1700 we multiply it by the rate of 9.55 cd to give us the total machine hour that was used in production so we have overheads so our overheads is going to be based on the machine hours which is the 1700 multiply by the rate that we have already calculated for that's the 9.55 cds per machine hours so we have 1700 hours multiply by 9.55 1700 multiply by 9.55 see this giving us 16,235 so we sum it up to give us the total cost 23 1035 scissors and that is our total cost so if the company is depending on the machine hours used it means for the cost of a unit of a product the total cost is above we are supposed to look for the unit cost of the product so let's look at the second one i i so using labor hours using labor hours what will be the unit cost of a product we already know the direct material direct material as 3300 and then our direct wages is still 3500 we already know this they've given it to us in the question as our actual cost we don't know the overheads but we know the rates to charge for the overheads so basing on the labor hours our prime cost is 6800 cities that is prime cost now we need to add the overheads to our prime cost to know the total cost of the product the labor hours given to us in the question is 1100 cities so as indicated on the screen you can see 1100 as the actual labor hours used in producing the product so we multiply by the rate that we calculated for so overheads is going to be 1100 hours multiply by the rates per labor hours so when we calculated for the labor hours we had 92 per labor hour that is indicated on your screens 92 per labor hours that is 92 cities so we go back and indicate multiply it by 92 so we have 1100 multiplied by 92 to give us 101 101,200 cities so we sum it up to get the total cost of the product and that will give us 108,000 cities so that is our total cost I hope you are following through and we'll be able to do the others i'll do the last one with you then we can go to our next objective so i i i i i i i'm basing on the prime cost percentage rate that was the third 
overhead absorption rate that we calculated for. So prime cost percentage rate, we have 116.21% of the prime cost as indicated on your screen. So we are going to base on that to calculate the total cost of the units of the product that have been produced. So using prime cost, The cost you need to be mat direct material use. Meta up to give us 6,800, and that will be our prime cost. And that will be our prime cost. And as I mentioned earlier, total cost is the summation of the prime cost and the overheads. We need to add our overheads to the prime cost to give us the total cost of the product. So we have overheads. And how do we get our overheads? Using the prime cost, how do we get the overheads? As I mentioned earlier, prime cost will never be given. You have to calculate for your prime cost. It's a summation of what all direct costs. In our question, we've been giving the Direct material as 3,300 and the direct labor as 3,500. So we add these two to give us the actual prime cost incurred on the product. So 3,300 and then 3,500. We are having what? 6,800. And we can even see it on our worksheet. Multiplied by the percentage we calculated for using the prime cost percentage rates we had 116.21 percent of prime cost as you can see i've indicated 116.21 percent of prime cost so we multiply by the percentage of 116.21 that is 116.21 percent and that will give us 7,902.28. So our total cost is going to be a summation of the prime cost and then the overhead. That is the 6,800 plus the 7,902.28. So our total cost is 14,000. 702.28. So the total cost to be charged on the unit of a product is 14,702 using the prime cost absorption rates. We have three more absorption rates to use to calculate for the unit cost of a product. I'm sure you are following through and you'll be able to do that. So I'll leave that also for you to try them in your jotters. So before I come to an end of the overheads, we have looked at what overhead was the types and we look at the steps. The step began with the collection, then we classified, then we apportioned them, we now have to do what absorption so absorption was the last thing under overheads so i hope you have been able to follow through and you'll be able to calculate the overhead cost of an item and be able to charge it to a product now let's look at the next topic which is job order costing what is job order costing is a process of ascertaining cost attributable to work undertaken to customer special requirements is the process of ascertaining cost attributable to work undertaken to customer special requirements the key term is ascertaining cost to work that is being undertaken to customer special requirements so a customer have to request for such work to be done to his or her specification. It is of short duration as compared to contract costing. When we talk about contract costing, it is of a long duration. It is in 
contract form like the construction of a road and a bridge but with the job other costs so all these works use a short duration unlike the constructional jobs like Pokwasi uh, bridge took almost a year for them to complete if i'm to ask for a uh, someone to print exercise books for me i'm not sure that would take a year so job order takes a short duration as compared to a contract costing purposes of job costing the main purposes of job costing are one to determine the cost of producing special purpose goods specially requested by a customer to determine the cost of producing special purpose goods specially requested by customers two to emphasize the importance of unit cost of specific request three to ascertain the profit or loss on each job and four to value the work in progress we have various characteristics of job costing and the major characteristics of job costing are one indirect costs are portioned unlike the direct costs that are located indirect costs are apportioned jobs are separately identified and different from each other jobs are separately identified and different from each other costs are not transferred it is just on one job so we don't transfer the cost of a particular job job done depends on the customer's order and specification before I can work I need my customer to specify what he or she needs so job is done based on the customer's special requirement then job done are normally of a short duration as I mentioned earlier jobs done and the job order costing are of a short duration as compared to the contract costing so this is a spaceman of job cost sheets let's go through quickly and we have seen this before during elements of cost as in when we were supposed to prepare a cost statement before we can get the total cost of a product we always have to look at the prime cost and then add the overhead cost then we have to arrive at our total cost so the prime cost plus the overheads give us our total cost and it can further be broken down so let's look at the spacemen above with job costing a customer can request for two different products or we can use two different products in producing a product so with the format you are seeing here on your screens we have direct material probably if it's a shoemaking we will need a leather we will need a glue so those are the materials we use in production so material x y and then material sb will give us the total materials used then we have the direct labor that is the amount we are paying for labor as in the workmanship then we have the direct expenses any other cost we incur aside material and labor we sum these three up to give us the prime cost we have to add the factory overheads to give us the production cost and the factory overheads can either be variable or fixed so we add these two up to give us the total factory overheads and then the factory overheads plus our prime cost give us the to total production cost now we need to add all other overheads in care that is selling and distribution and then administration to give us our total cost when we get to know our total cost we want to know how much we can sell the product on the market the total cost is the actual cost incurred on the product before we produce that particular product now how much can we sell the product on the market that is to know the selling price before you can sell something on the market i'm sure you will add your profit right so we need to add the profit to the total cost then we can know how much we will sell it on the market so the total cost plus the profit margin will give us our selling price let's look at how best we can illustrate this but before that we'll look at markup and then margin markup is a profit expressed as a percentage or fraction 
of the cost of production. So markup is always expressed on the total cost of a product. For example, if the cost of production of a job is 500 and 550 and then the profit charge on the cost is 20 percent what will be the selling price we first have to know our profit before we can know our selling price that is our profit plus our total cost will give us the selling price so we as indicated on your screens you can see 20 divided by 100 multiplied by the cost of 550 so that will give us 100 and 10 cities 110 cities so that is our profit per the cost of 550 what then will be the total selling price the selling price will be our cost of 550 plus the profit we just calculated which is 110 giving us a total selling price of 660 cities that is if you are using markup Markup is never charged on selling price, but it is always charged or calculated on the total cost of a product. What then is margin? Margin is the profit expressed as a percentage or fraction of selling price. Margin is the profit expressed as a percentage or a fraction of selling price. For example, if the selling price is 800 CDs and the margin is 25%, then our profit is going to be the 25% of the 800,000, which is the selling price. So that gives us 200 CDs as our profit because margin is calculated on the selling price. Once we know our profit and we know our selling price, then we can get our total cost from that. Our total cost will be the selling price less the profit. The first one, we knew the total cost. We didn't know the selling price. So we added the profit to the total cost to give us the selling price. Now we know the selling price, but we don't know the cost. So we have to less the profit of 200000 from the total cost of 800,000 giving us from the selling price of 800,000 sorry giving us a total cost of 600,000 so this is how we calculate markup and margin now let's look at how we can prepare the cost sheet for a particular unit of a product illustration James Bond Enterprise is a printing press incurred at Takwa. An order to print a size books with code 300 was accepted. An order to print exercise books with code 300 was accepted. The data below provides its cost records. The data below provides its cost records. Material issued to job is 58,000. Wages. Under the wages, we have stages. We have the impression stage, the collating stage, and then the trimming stage. The impression stage used 350 hours at a rate of 100 cities. The collating stage used 220 hours at a rate of 80. And then the trimming stage used 70 hours at a rate of 30. In addition to the above, the press incurred the following overhead during the period. We have variable overheads. Impression used 330 CDs for 15 hours. Collating used 18,000 CDs for 6,000 hours. And then trimming used 12,000 CDs for 3,000 hours. Fixed overheads on the job amounted to 95,000 at 31 hours working time. You are required to calculate or ascertain the price chargeable if management decides to make profit of 25% on the selling price. So let's look at how best we can prepare the cost sheet for the printing press. 
So cost sheets. The company's name is James Bond. We have the job cost sheets. Okay, so we have already seen the formats of which we've done it before in Form 1 using the cost statement. The same thing we are going to be applying here. It's just a few rules that will change. So we know the material used on the job. We have direct material. Direct material. And it was given to us in the question as 58,000 cities. So we indicated 58,000. Then our direct wage we have the impression stage a minute. I water. I don't know. Oh, but I'll finish soon. Is it fine? Baby. Okay. S can I go? Okay. So, with the impression stage with R, Question on the screen. Impression used 350 hours at a rate of 100 CD. So we indicate 350 hours multiplied by 100 CDs. Three fifty multiplied by hundred, and that will give us thirty five thousand. And the second stage was collating, and they use two hundred and twenty hours at eighty. So we indicate that. 220 hours multiplied by 80 cities. We have 17,600. And the last stage was the trimming stage. And they also use 70 hours at a rate of 30. So 70 hours multiplied by 30 giving us 2,100 CDs. We sum it all up to know the total wages incurred on the product. So 2,100 plus 17,600 plus 35,000 giving us a total of 54,700 cities. There was no expenses stated in the question. So we add the two, that is the direct material and the direct labor to get our prime cost. So 54,700 plus 58,000 of direct material, giving us 112,000. 700 cities as our prime cost.
we add our overheads to get our total cost of the product. So our overheads. Add overheads. And our overheads too, we have impression using a particular number of hours, collating stage, a different hours, and then the trimming stage. Don't forget, we just finished calculating the overhead absorption rate. So per the overhead absorption rate we did earlier on, we are going to be applying the same thing we did for the overheads in the job cost sheet. Overheads will not be given to us direct, but we need to look out for our overheads. We've been given the total overhead cost they incurred and the number of hours they used. So we will have to do it here and get the rate per overheads then we can apply it on the actual hours used. So as mentioned earlier, we mentioned that for us to get the overhead absorption rate is the total overheads divided by the hours used. We need to do that to get the rate before we can apply it on the actual labor hours used. So for impression, we have 30,000 cities as indicated on your screens here divided by 15 hours, 15,000 hours used, which will give us 2 per hour, 2 per hour. Then collating is also 18,000 yen as the total overheads divided by the 6,000 hours. So 18,000 divided by 6,000 hours, which also give us 18,000 divided by 6,000, giving us three CDs per hour. Then the last one is streaming. Trimming is 12,000 divided by 3,000 hours. Also giving us 4 CDs per hour. So 4 CDs, 3 CDs, and 2 CDs. The fixed overheads on the job amounted to 95,000 at 31 hours. So the first overhead should be this 95,000 divided by the 31,000. That is 95,000 divided by 31,000 hours. Divided by 31,000. And that will be 3.06 Per hour. So we now know the rates to use to calculate for the variable overheads and then the fixed overhead for the product. So we come back to our worksheets. So under the overheads, we have the variable and under the variable, we have impression. And the rate for impression was two cities. We already know the actual hours they use, which is impression 350 hours. But this time for the overheads, it's at a different rate of two cities. So you multiply the two cities by the 350 hours to know the over. And calculating the rate was three cities as we just finished calculating. And the number of hours used was 220. So you multiply the 3 by 220. Giving us 660. Then the last one is the trimming. And the rate we calculated for 
was four CDs per R. So we multiply the four CDs by the number of hours, which was 70 hours. This time we are not using the rate that have been indicated by the wages, but the actual hours. We have already calculated for the actual overhead rates. So we are multiplying by the hours to know the overhead cost incurred on the product. So 4 by 70 hours. And that will give us 280. We sum it up to know the total variable overheads incurred. That is 280 plus 660 plus our 700 indicated here. So our total variable overhead is 1,640. Sorry. Then we add the total face overhead. Fixed overheads. We're giving the number of hours done under the fixed overheads and the cost that was incurred, which was 95,000. That is the overhead divided by the 31,000 hours gave us 3.06 per hour. So to know the total over fixed overheads, we need to add all the number of hours done under impression collating and then um, trimming. So the number of hours used during the impression stage was 350 plus 220 plus 70, giving us a total hours of 640. So we multiply the 640 hours by the rate of 3.06 CDs under the first cost. And that will give us 1,958.4 as the total face cost. We add it to know our total overheads. And then we can add our overheads to our prime cost to arrive at our total cost of the product. So we have 1,958.4 plus 1,640. And that gives us... 3598.4. So we add it to our prime cost of 112,700. To give us the total cost of the product. So our total cost. It's equal to 116,298.4. Now we know our total cost. How do we get our selling price or our sales for the products? Per our question, we have to prepare the job sheet where management decides to make profit of 25% on the selling price. With this question, it means the profit is in margin. As I mentioned earlier, margin is on selling price and the markup is on total cost. With our solution here, we only know the total cost, but we don't know the selling price. So we cannot calculate the margin on the total cost. We need to convert the margin to markup. And in doing that, we subtract. That is converting margin to markup that will be the 25 over 100 minus 25 we need to subtract so that will give us 25 over 75 that is how we convert margin to markup and we are converting markup to margin We add to the denominator, so that will be 25 over 100 plus 25, which will give us 25 over 125. So with our requirements here, we are supposed to calculate the selling price at a profit of 
25% on the selling price. Once they have indicated that the profit is on the selling price, it means you have to convert from margin to markup. So our profit will be the 25 over 75 multiplied by the total cost of 116,000. 298.4 so 25 divided by 75 multiplied by 116 298.4 so our profit will be 38,766.13 therefore our selling price will be equal to total cost plus profit. And our total cost was 116,298.4 plus profit of 38,766.13, giving us a total selling price of One hundred and fifty five thousand and sixty four point five three cities. All right. I hope you have all been following through and now we'll be able to prepare a job cost sheet when we are asked to do so. We should know when to convert from margin to markup and from markup to margin. For your assignments you are asked to look at the four types of overhead absorption, define job order costing, state three purposes of job costing, and then state two characteristics of job costing. We bring the curtain down to today's lesson, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. we we'll meet again next week, and enjoy your evening. I'm, I'm Madam Judith and I still remain your costing teacher. Bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.